class, I wanted to let you know that I made all of these slips for you. They're different colors. If you don't see a slip color there that you think you should see, let me know. Notice that the lid of each container, see, matches the side. So please keep the correct lids with the correct base. I also have brown slip, which is over here. Um, I haven't made it yet, but no one wanted it. If you do, come see me. The slip lives in the back of the room in this back cabinet. If you see a lock on it, you're going to need a key. Please ask your substitute teacher or myself for this key. Alright class, you open it up. Notice that all of the slip is on the bottom shelf. It's not mixed up with the glaze. The glaze is on the top shelf. You're looking at the slip. It's at the bottom shelf. So you'll open it up and inside you'll see that there's that watery layer on top so you're going to need a spoon to mix it. You'll find the spoons over here by the sink. Hopefully someone's cleaned them already. Unfortunately this one's messy so I'm going to have to clean it. Apparently this spoon was really messy. Okay so you go back over and you mix up the slip Keep mixing all the sides. You want to get it really, really nice and consistent. It should be about the consistency of 2% milk. If it's too thick, you can always add water, but don't add water from the sink. Um, I have distilled water. It makes a huge difference, and it's in the corner. Um, it's right over here. So this is the distilled water. All right, when you complete Con the construction, when you complete the construction of your work, um, leave it wrapped up in a bag because it's important that your piece is not completely dried out. You cannot add slip when it's completely dried out. So this is not like glaze. It is not glaze. So do not think it is glaze. It is not glaze. It is slip, but it's not like slip you use to attach things. Now, now that my celadon is all mixed up nice and beautifully, I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to wash off this spoon and come back and, and um, do the same for this deep crimson and the black slip. So I'll be right back. Hey class, I sped this video up. I didn't realize I talked so much. So I'm just going to point out some really um, important things. One is that this isn't glaze. I think I've said that enough. But anyway, um, if it's too thick, again, add water. There, there's distilled water. Don't use the sink water. Um, you can use my blue banding wheel, that's what I'm using right now, to turn my plate, bowl, object. Um, and it's important to note that because it's not glaze, you don't need three coats, you just need one coat of slip, and that will do the trick. So make sure your brush stroke is really even, and that's what I'm talking about right now, is an even brush stroke. And I'm probably making fun jokes that I think I'm funny at, that you shouldn't hear anyway. Okay. And then I'm going to get to my mug while I let this dry. And when I do that, I'm, doing the, I'm showing you two different techniques. Because for the bowl plate, I'm going to scraffito it. I'm going to carve away from it. But for the mug, all I'm doing is I'm painting slip onto it. So I'm painting a lot of color. And I'm starting with the blue, but I'm going to add green. And I add this like abstract leaf kind of design all the way around this piece of pottery. Um, my piece ended up cracking because I was holding it and moving so much. So I really liked that mug and it's a bummer that I ended up breaking it. And I'm really trying to hold it delicately. I mean, I'm doing this demonstration for you guys. So since I broke my own mug just by holding it like that, I would remind you guys to leave your pottery still and stop touching it so much. Once it starts to dry, Stop touching it. Leave it on a wearboard and just turn the wearboard to paint it if possible instead of moving it all over the place like I'm doing. Um, I mean, granted, I'm getting paint exactly where I want it, but no, don't do that. Awesome. Okay, I painted the front and now that it's dry, I can flip it over so that I can do the same thing to the back side. The cool thing about slip is that you actually can paint the bottom of things, but I still don't recommend it for two reasons. 
so you'll have to talk me into it. One reason is I'll think it's glaze and then I won't fire your piece. And the second reason is since you can't glaze it, where you've put the slip on it, it won't look the same as the rest of your piece anyway. So you might as well intentionally make it look like it's part of the foot. So that's why I'm not gonna put slip on the foot. That's the ring around the outside. Because I want to remember that I can't glaze that. And you will all put a clear coat of glaze over your colored slip. However, I can put it on the inside because that's not touching the kiln shelf. Only that raised area is. So there's that. I'm going to let this dry now. So then I go ahead and I add a second layer of slip on top of this black slip. You can do that. The top layer will show. You might get a little bit of transparency. And also no, look at your slip because some of them look alike. So know which one that you're using. Again, for the sake of time, um, I didn't show you all this video. I added other colors, um, but let's fast forward now. Here we go. All right, now that I have my slip painted on, I can start scraffitoing it off with different designs. And it might simply just start with lines that go like this. So now, everywhere that I'm carving away, that color is leaving, and this will be white. And there's also going to be a cool texture. So that's opposite of just painting it on, like I did with this. I have this abstract kind of flowery thing going on. Um, as I was painting, I was holding it too much, and I ended up cracking the sides. You can barely see that, but it will definitely happen when I fire it. So. Be really careful. I would actually recommend that you just leave your piece when it's leather hard on an area and move it around with a wear board or something like a banding wheel. I wish I had more banding wheels for all of you. Um, we're gonna have to share. So I'm gonna keep this design going, see what happens. Another cool thing you can do with Scraffito um, is you have that background layer and then you can um, take that away so that you get the white clay body again but you can go back and put slip on top of that white clay body so I'm gonna do that at the end of this short little clip where I add a little bit of that celadon blue color on top of just a few areas of where I've carved away so think about how that could help your pottery piece if you choose to do that for yourself <laughs> 